Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to play a scenario from the Tank on Tank system from Lock and Load Publishing. In particular, a scenario from Tank on Tank Defenders on the Rhine, which is the expansion to Tank on Tank West Front. Tank on Tank West Front is one of two games in this system. The other is Tank on Tank East Front. Now this system is a World War II introductory tactical hex encounters combat game. And in particular, this game is designed to introduce newcomers and young gamers to wargaming. In the scenario we're going to play today, we've got two US infantry squads and a Wolverine tank trapped on a ridgeline by superior German forces. To their rescue, to the west, we've got three large US Pershing tanks trying to race across a bridge to break that bottleneck and rescue their trapped comrades. Let's jump into the action. It's a very tight scenario that could go either way. Let's get going. So let's start with an overview of the tactical situation. At the core of this scenario right here, we have five German Panzer IV tanks and a Tiger tank. And they have trapped to their north two US infantry squads and a Wolverine tank in these woods on this ridge line. And this is the single victory condition for this battle. The German forces have to wipe out two of the three US units that are trapped over here. Now, trying to rescue these trapped, inf these trapped US units are these three Persian tanks coming from the village on the other side of the river. So the goal for the US forces is try to have these units hang on as long as they possibly can, maybe maneuvering and firing and trying to stay, basically stay alive and do as much damage as they can while these Pershing tanks race to the rescue. From the German perspective, what our strategy is going to be is to have the Panzer V tanks push forward aggressively to try to use their numerical advantage to wipe out some of the infantry and Wolverine the tank here and get a victory right away. While this Tiger tank, we're going to basically park it right on the edge of the bridge on the other side of the, the river here and make the Pershing tanks come at us one at a time. So this is the tactical situation. Now let's talk a little bit, oh yes, one more thing. To the US advantage, this Wolverine tank here is an ace, which means it gets to fire again if it misses in its first round. That could be a huge advantage as it's getting swarmed by these vast numbers of Panzer IV tanks. Now let's talk a little bit about how gameplay works. This again is a simple introductory war game designed to teach beginners about hex encounters warfare. So let, it's, it's not a very complicated rule set. Um, each, this scenario that we're looking at here has eight turns and each turn one side's gonna go, then the other side's gonna go. We're gonna roll for initiative in this scenario to see whether the Germans or the Americans get to activate first. Then in each turn, each side is gonna have two to four activations per turn. So you don't, guess, you don't necessarily get to move and fire everything in a turn you have to it's kind of like you have two to four orders and that number is variable we'll show how that works as we jump into the action so you have to kind of choose and prioritize what units you want to do stuff in each turn because your chances are you can't do everything you want to do now let's take a look at one of the units to kind of get an idea on how combat works and then I think everything else we can explain as we jump into the action Okay, so we're looking at our German tanks, our five Panzer IVs and our Tiger sitting on the east side of the river on this morning of April 1945. And basically, one thing to note first is that units have facing. Uh, anything that comes out equal to this unit on this side here is the front of the unit, and basically anything behind it is a flank. You can only fire to the front, and if you take fire across the flank from the rear or from the side, it's a plus one die roll modifier on that shot against that unit. Now, let's also take a look at the three numbers that are on the unit, because this is basically this, the combat factors that you're going to be using. The very most left number is the range of the unit. It is a firing factor of two. So uh, this has a range of two here. Panzer could basically fire two squares, and we'll talk about line of sight and stuff like that when it comes up. The middle number here is very important. This is the kind of the armor defensive rating of the unit. Higher is better. So a nine means that when the opponents tack on, a, on attack on, against this Panzer IV on two dice rolls, they have to exceed or get to a nine. And there's some modifiers that go in there. A shot at nine or greater is gonna wipe out the Panzer IV. Eight or less is going to be no harm to the unit. There's no steps to the unit, so it's basically one shot and you are done. Lastly, the green number on the right here is a two. This is the movement factor of the unit and there are terrain costs as would be expected, like woods cost two movement points, 
points. Um, basic hexes cost one and things like that. So with that in mind, we've kind of talked pretty much about everything we need to know in order to be able to start this scenario. We'll pick up everything else along the way so we can jump right into the action here. Let's go into our situation now. We're going to roll for initiative. To roll for initiative, high die gets to go first. We're gonna use the Germans as the black die, the US as a white die. We get a two for the Germans and a three for the US. So the US will get to act first. So let's think about what we want to do with the US units knowing that we get two to four activations. We're gonna get at least two, but we don't know how many more we're gonna get. So our general strategy for the US is to try to get these, I, I wanna try to get these Persian tanks racing towards this bridge and get them across the bridge as fast as they can. But I think we're gonna need the Pershing tanks in order to be able to get the, help the Wolverine and the infantry units survive. Having said that, I think our number one priority is if the Wolverine or the infantry get any kind of a shot, we wanna take it because the Wolverine is in particular, this ace Wolverine gets to fire twice if it misses the first time. This is a pretty powerful unit up here and I think it can do a lot of damage on these Panzer IVs that are trying to advance. With that in mind, the very first opportunity that we have is this Wolverine, we'll take a look at a closer look at this here. You might be wondering about the firepower of units. In the base game of tank on tank, west front and east front, all units have basically the same firepower. However, in the expansion, they added a gun caliber variant and we're gonna use that in this game. So basically units either have a high, a large caliber rating, a small caliber rating, or a neutral kind of a medium caliber rating. This Wolverine has a medium caliber rating, so it's basically going to roll two dice. And we'll talk about how this changes for our Tigers and Perchings, which have large caliber guns. So that's gonna change for them. But for right now, how this combat works is, we're gonna roll two dice for the Wolverine. We're gonna add one for each firing unit that's involved in the attack, because we can designate more than one unit to fire as part of the attack. But our infantry here only have a range of one, so they are useless in trying to shoot at this Panzer. So it's the Wolverine all by itself. It's got a range of three, so we're gonna roll two dice, two D6. We're gonna add one for the firing unit, and then anything for any modifiers, but there are none. The only die roll modifiers would be plus one if we had another firing unit. Um, if we were flanking the unit, but we're not, this is a frontal to frontal shot here. And then if the, the defender was in woods or a town, uh, it would be plus one, it'd be minus one to the die roll modifier as well. So this basically is gonna be two D6, plus one to it. If it's a nine or greater, we've wiped out the Panzer IV. However, remember we mentioned the Wolverine here is an ace, so it gets to roll again if it misses the first time. So our Wolverine eyes the Panzer IVs across the mist here and takes its opening shot. It gets a 10, plus one is 11. This Panzer IV has been drilled at the start of the scenario, wiped out of action, and we've used one of our actions. The US off to a strong start here. At the moment, I don't wanna do anything else with these units over here because I kinda of wanna leave them sitting in the woods. We get good cover in the woods and we're up high. So let's make those Panzer IVs come to us and let's not help us help them out by moving around here. But one of the things that we know we wanna do is we wanna get our Pershings coming over into the action. All right, so as we look at our Pershings in the town over here to the west of the river, there is no easy way to do this. This tiger is just gonna block the road here. We're gonna to have to blow it up, I think. So with a range of three on these Pershings that we can see, I think if we can sit two of our Pershing tanks here, they could both open fire on the tiger. So our goal is gonna to be to maneuver two of these Pershing tanks up into these positions, open fire on the tiger, and hopefully we can put it out of action. Let's start by activating this unit right here. We'll move it one along the road, two along the road. Now its movement factors are two, but if everything's on the road, it gets an additional one. So it's gonna rumble further along, three right up in here. Now we've activated our second unit. Normally when you're playing the game, you draw a chits to see how many activation points you get per turn. But when you're playing solitaire, they encourage you to take your two and then roll a die. We're gonna roll a die to see if we get a third and fourth activation and we're gonna do that one at a time. So to check to see if we're gonna get our third activation, which is a one in three chance, basically we're gonna roll this die. If it's a one or a two, the turn is over. If it's a three, four, five, or six, we get a third activation. We get a six, so we get a third activation. Let's take advantage of it and move this Pershing, rumbling through the road. It, the road negates the town cost, which would normally be two, two, three, and we are here in position on the road. Now we're gonna roll again, and we're gonna see if we get a third activation, which would allow it, a fourth activation, which would allow us to move this Pershing. On this is a 50% chance. On a one, two, or three, we lose it. On a four, five, or six, the US can go again. They get a five. 
One, two, three. We'll leave our pursing like that. We've got our pursings all rumbling towards the bridge. That was an excellent US turn because they got four activations and with their shot, they took out the Panzer IV. The US are off to a strong start. Now it's time for the German activation in turn one. We have a number of options that we could do with the German. We could try a straight rush or we could try to slide some units off to the east here and maybe sweep them by the tank apparent. Or we could kind of spread out and try to get a flanking shot on the Wolverine, which I think might be helpful too. And I think actually that's what we're going to try. I'm going to take two of our Panzer IVs and try to push them down the middle, figuring we're probably going to lose one of them. I'm going to track this Panzer IV and slide it over here, and then have it try to race up past the, onto this hill top here and try to get in behind the Wolverine. We're going to send one other Panzer IV off to the west here to try to get some kind of a flanking shot perhaps on it. I don't know, it's still... Actually, it looks like it's going to be really hard to get a flanking shot on it. To get a flanking shot on it, we'd have to get over here with that. So that doesn't look like it's going to work very well. Okay, here what we're going to do. We're going to push these three panzers straight at the Wolverine. We're going to send this panzer on a flanking move around. That's what we're going to try to do. So let's act, make our first activation as the Germans down here. Now, one thing, you'll notice that this Panzer IV has an underline under its name. That means it's a headquarters unit, and a headquarters unit has a special feature. When you activate a headquarters unit for movement, you can also move any other unit that's adjacent to it. So as the first German activation, we're going to activate this Panzer IV, and we're going to have them head straight across the road here into the field, heading up to the hill to press the attack on the Wolverine. So this one is going to go one, two. This Panzer, which was adjacent to it, is going to go one, two. This Panzer as well is going to go one, two, and our Panzers are starting to press the attack under fire now again against the Wolverine on the hilltop. As our second activation, our Tiger is out of range here. I'm tempted to try to move it down into the woods here because that's going to make it a tougher target. But if we move it down into the woods, the Pershings could then basically just race across the bridge and go flying by and ignore us. So at least for the moment, I'm going to leave the Tiger here at the end of the bridge and just say, come get us to these Pershings over here. However, our second activation then will be this Panzer IV right here, which is gonna slide to the woods over here. And basically what it means is on the next turn, we can have it go one, two, there's no movement cost for going up a hill, no movement penalty. So then it'll be able maybe to come by and behind the Wolverine on the next turn, sneaky, sneaky, which might help us take that Wolverine out. So that's the second German activation and to be honest, now units, armored units that move can also use another activation to fire, and you can do that in any order, but none of our Panzer IVs are in range, and they've all moved, so there's nothing really for us to do there. I am really torn as to whether to move this Tiger into the woods here, because it would add one to the die roll modifier, and notice the Tiger's defense is 11. That's pretty strong. Into the woods, it's gonna make it a 12, but these Pershings are large caliber tanks, which means they're gonna have a pretty good chance, even with the the high defense value here to wiping out this tiger. Uh, but for the moment, we're gonna leave it here at the end of the bridge because I think if I were to move into the woods, if I'm the US, I'm just gonna to try to fly by the tiger as quickly as I can because I can fire as I move by it too. So we'll leave the tiger where it is and that's gonna end the German turn. They, we don't want a third and fourth activation. So we're gonna pass for the rest of it. And we're gonna turn the activation over to the US for turn two. So now we come to the US activation on their second turn. Uh, basically what we're gonna to try to do is to push these Pershings to take a shot, to take a shot at the tiger and see what damage we can do with this Wolverine against these Panzer IVs attacking. Let's take our shot with the Wolverine first because that's an utmost priority. So the Wolverine here has a clear shot at this Panzer IV headquarter tank, which would be a really good unit to take out of action because the Panzer IV would then be able to unable, the headquarters tank would be unable to activate the units around it. It would really break up the German attack. Now it's gonna get two D6 plus one unit firing. It gets a shot at the Panzer IVs. It needs a nine or total to hit. It gets an eight plus one because one unit is firing, makes it a nine, which hits and wipes out the Panzer IV. This Wolverine is on fire, breaking up the German, German attack is faltering here pretty quickly. Within two turns, they've lost, what, one, one third of their attacking force. Looking pretty good for the Americans right now. Let's go now activate our Pershings. So if we look at the battle for the bridge here, the goal for these Pershings is gonna to be to try to get a shot at the Tiger. The Pershings have a range of three. So if we park a Pershing here and a Pershing here, they'll both be able to fire at the Tiger. This is a headquarters Pershing, so we can activate it and move the other Pershing here adjacent to it with our second activation. So let's go one, two, because it's got a movement of two forward facing, one, two. We could have it push forward more 
and we will actually do that onto the bridge. Units block line of sight, but this Pershing would still be able to fire at this Tiger. The line of sight isn't blocked by this hex. So we'll send this Pershing straight at the Tiger down the bridge, racing down the bridge. Our headquarters tank is gonna fire up, kind of sit off to the side. And now we get to roll to see if we get another activation. If we do, we can have these two Pershings fire at the Tiger. So we need a one or a two ends the US turn. Ah, that's too bad. US get a two here, which means their activation ends. We go to the German turn two and their activations. Germans looking here pretty dire at the start. Um, we've got three things we definitely wanna do and we could use four activations if we could get them. We wanna have these Panzers push up and try to get a shot at the Wolverine here. And the Tiger definitely take a shot at the, the Pershing here. I think actually that's gonna be a priority. Let's, um, is to, ah, but these, we lost the headquarter tanks. We gotta move them one at a time. Ah, uh, that's a bummer. Now we could take an activation and promote a Panzer to a headquarter unit. And we might actually do that. Actually, that, that makes a lot of sense to do that because a promoted unit can immediately act and move in this turn. So we are going to promote this Panzer IV here to a headquarter unit with our first activation. Then with our second activation, we can move both of these units. We're gonna move one, two to here, one, two to here, and that's our second activation. Now, our third activation could be to fire on this Wolverine or fire on the Pershing, but it depends on whether the Germans get this activation or not. We need a three, four, five, or six to continue the turn. They get a four, excellent. So the question is, what's our priority shot? I think we have to try to take a shot at this Wolverine. It's not the greatest odds, but it's not that bad because the Wolverine only has a defense of eight. It is in the woods. So that gets us a plus one die, but we have two Panzers that can shoot at it because basically a firing order is any unit that can fire at a unit will fire. Can, any unit can fire a unit that wants to. So we're gonna have these two Panzer IVs with our third German activation fire at the Wolverine up in the hills. We get 2d6 plus two. It has to equal an eight or greater, but there's a plus one, a, a minus one die roll modifier because the Wolverine is in the woods. So our, our Tiger Panzer IVs fire. They get a seven, plus two is a nine. The Wolverine is in the woods, minus one is an eight. It equals the Wolverine's defense factor. The Panzer IVs have blown apart the Wolverine and taken it out of action. Suddenly, the tables have turned now on the, on the US forces. One of the three units taken for the victory condition has been reached by the Germans here. The sides have suddenly, with that one shot, flipped in this battle. Now let's see if the Germans get one more activation. To do that, they need a four, five, or six. They get a two. The Germans' turn has ended. We go to the US turn three. It was looking so promising for the US, and now the sides have turned here. Let's think a little bit about what we can do. The infantry has a range of one, and I don't wanna move it out here, but let's actually take a quick look at the infantry units because there is something that kind of works to our advantage here. I'm pulling this infantry unit just out to see it a little bit. You'll notice there's a seven slash 10. The infantry unit's defense in clear terrain is a seven. In woods or city hexes, it goes up to a 10. So we're actually in a pretty good defensive position there. I mean, the, these Panzer IVs still could get pretty lucky, but we've only got a range of one. It would be suicidal to move the infantry out to try to take out these Panzer tanks. We have to sit in these hexes here, wait for the Panzers, you know, what we could do actually is move up onto the ridge line because the line of sight would be blocked. That might be a smarter thing to do. Let the Panzers come to us and then we could move up and attack them. But we have the Pershings to deal with too. Let's think for a second. All right, we're gonna do, our first action is gonna be the obvious action here, which is the two Pershings opening fire on the Tiger. Now this gets a chance to see how the large caliper variant works with the game. These Pershing tanks are large caliper guns. So instead of rolling two dice, two D6, they get to roll three D6 and keep the highest two numbers. That's how the variant works. If it's a small caliber um, gun, you roll three dice and you keep the two lowest die rolls. So this gives you some variability in the attacking power of the unit. In this scenario, both the Pershings and the Tigers are large caliper guns. So our two Pershings are, 
are going to use one of their activation, use one of our US activations. They're going to open fire on the tiger. We get to roll three dice. We are going to add two to the number. This tiger is in the clear terrain, and we have to equal 11 or greater, hoping for some big numbers. These Pershings, in order for the US to have a chance, these Pershings have to break through and start putting pressure on those uh, Panzer IV tanks. Oh, perfect for that. Check it out. We get a six and a four is a 10. Adding two to it is a 12. They hit the Tiger and destroy it. The tiger tank wiped out of action with the first thing and the bridge now is open. Perfect. Let's think about what we're gonna do, however. I think up here, just to slow the Germans down, because I'm afraid that these two Panzer tanks, if they get a lucky roll, they're gonna take out this infantry. We're gonna have the infantry unit move back off the ridge line here, behind the tree line, out of sight of the Panzer IVs, and make them come to us to kind of, it's a longer battle. So that's gonna be our second activation. Let's go to the third US activation. If they get it, they need a three, four, five, or six. They get a six, they get it. Let's push this other infantry doing the same thing. It's still on the board here um, on the map. So it's gonna push off the ridge. We're just gonna have them fall back and make the Panzers come to us. Now, we get one more chance here, which would allow us to move the Pershings. So we're gonna have to roll again. Let's see what we get. We need a four, five, or six to be able to have one more fourth activation. We get a five, excellent. So we're gonna activate our Pershing here, the headquarters, which also activates an adjacent unit. So we can move the Pershings to and start to put pressure on these Panzer IVs because notice what we can do. One, two, it gets an extra movement factor because it's on a road. Three, and it's right in behind these Panzer IVs here and it's in range. So this creates some definite problems for the Germans now. Let's move our other pans Pershing. It can't go across this little ridge line here, but it can go one, two, three, facing this way. We've got a gap of distance here, but the Pershings have arrived across the river, putting pressure now on the Germans, and the US force is falling back. However, the Germans only need one more unit wiped out to be able to win the scenario. Let's go to the German activation on turn three. We can activate because of the headquarter unit, we can move everything. One activation to move these two and a second activation to move the Panzer IV. Let's use our first activation to move this one. We're gonna go one, two, movements, hills doesn't cost anything. We're gonna change the facing of the Panzer because I'm not worried about the infantry coming down here. They don't have any range, they can't fire at it. This Pershing is the dangerous thing if it starts to get some ideas. First activation does that. Second activation, we're gonna move this Panzer IV and activate both of them with movement. And I'm gonna reverse it and have it go backwards that way do this turn here so that it's facing the Pershing. Now, the infantry could move back in here and flank it, uh, That's, but I'd rather have, oh, yeah, we kind of have to take that risk, right? Because there's no way to get it to face the front of both units, that won't work. And I don't want the Pershing getting a shot at the rear, especially because more Pershings are coming across the bridge. So that is our second activation. The Panzers now are out of range which is a bummer. It would have had to move them to do that anyway. That's our only choice here. Nothing's in range, the Germans are done. Let's go to the US activation in turn four. Now, as the US, we have some interesting decisions here. We could have this infantry activate. Oh, but infantry can't move and fire in the same activation. Uh, in the same turn. So it can only do one of those two activations. Armor can move and fire. Infantry can only do one or the other. So our, ch our, our, ch our choices here, if we move the US infantry back into the woods here, they're gonna get that die roll modifier, but the Panzers are gonna basically be able to turn around and fire at them right in that next turn and potentially end the battle. However, I think our first and easy activation here, oh, you know what we can do? Of course we can. We can move our Pershing here, our headquarter Pershing, right down here at the, the bottom edge of the map here. We can move them up to and have two of our Pershings fire at the Panzer IV, the headquarter unit, and wipe it out. That's what we're gonna do. One, two. That's an easy decision here. So the Pershing rumbles across the bridge, takes a flanking position here to this other Pershing. They have a range of three, which is out of range of the Panzer IV. One, two, three. Second activation will be for this Pershing and this Pershing to fire on the Panzer IV. It's a large caliper gun, so it gets three dice and we're gonna take the highest two. We need a nine or greater, but we're adding plus two to it because the, um, the units are two units firing. This looks like a pretty, oh, is it, I was gonna say easy kill. Oh, that's terrible. The Pershings get a four. The high number is a three. 
four, five, it doesn't come anywhere close to hitting a nine. Oh, we had that Panzer IV dead to rights. That could twist the whole thing right here. God, that was a terrible shot. Okay, that's one activation. Now let's see what else, actually that's two activations, right? Because we moved, so we have to roll for a third activation. They get a six, so we're gonna get a third activation. Do we bring the Pershing that's still, kind of this Pershing kind of stopped for a barbecue or something. It's on the other side of the river, not doing anything. Or do we dare move our infantry up and have them attack? It would need a nine, an eight or greater on the die roll. The Panzers are gonna be able to move and attack anyway next turn. So yeah, I'm gonna push the infantry back into the woods here to get that die roll modifier. Then we're gonna roll one more to see if we get a fourth, uh, a, a fourth activation. We need a four, five, or six. We get it as the US. That's helpful because that leaves this infantry unit in a, in a better defended position here. We're gonna push the infantry up here. We go to the German activation in turn four. Their path is clear, right? I mean, it's time to wipe this infantry out because casualties don't matter. This is the best shot they're gonna get. I mean, we could potentially, we can't fire until we turn, which means we have to move these. We could potentially move this uh, tank over here, up here, and try to get three-way firing, but we might miss the die roll. There's a one in three chance we might not get a third activation. So we're gonna take our first activation, activate the Panzer IV headquarters here. Let's have it face this way. And we'll have it face, it doesn't matter because, oh, actually it does matter because if they fire at this one, the Pershings fire at this one, everything's in the front but the infantry unit's gonna fire too. These Panzers are dead to rights here if they do that. Um, and this is front, and that is front. They're both in the front. We're gonna fire at this infantry unit. If they get it, however, the battle's over, the scenario's over, the Germans have won by defeating, wiping out two of the units on this ridge here. So, okay, our Panzers are gonna fire. We get a 2D6. They need a 10 or greater, which is the improved defensive value for this infantry unit and we get a plus one, they also get a plus one die roll modifier for this too. This is a big number, but the Panzers fire, they get a four, they fail. Four plus two is six, it's nowhere close to 10, and plus the die roll modifier, they would have needed uh, minus one, they get another minus one on their die roll. So yeah, that, that, uh, that didn't work there. So uh, Panzers fail, that's their second activation. Let's see if the Germans get a third activation. We get a five, they do. So we're gonna have this unit move our Panzer turn, go one, two, and face this way. Now I think we can have this Panzer IV fire. I just wanna to check to see whether units can be fired on twice in the same turn. I don't see any rule that says this Panzer, that a unit can't be fired on twice in the same turn. So we're gonna see if the Germans get their last activation. They need a four, five, or six. They get a one, they fail. We're going to turn five. That shot could not be taken. So turn five, US are up, and they have some juicy targets here. As we start the US turn five, we're gonna have the Pershing and the infantry here attack this Panzer IV. Then we're gonna repeat it with this infantry squad here and this Pershing here attacking this Panzer IV. Uh, the, uh, the rules don't state what happens when you have a large caliper gun combining with a regular attack in one attack, but I assume we're still gonna get to roll three dice and take the highest two because we have a large caliper involved. Furthermore, the Pershing here sits in this Panzer IV's flank, so we're gonna get a plus one die roll modifier to this attack. So we get two units attacking, rolling three dice and keeping the highest two. Defensive value of the Panzer is a nine. Oh, Boxcar's 12 is an automatic hit no matter what happens. This Panzer goes up in flames. The U.S. getting closer to victory here as their second activation. This Pershing and this infantry are gonna do the same thing. One unit is flanking, this infantry squad close assaulting from the rear of the Panzer, so plus one to our die roll modifier. Pershing again gets three dice. We get, oh, that's not too good. We get a six, is it enough? We get seven, eight for the two units firing, plus one for the rear attack. Nine is just enough to take this Panzer IV out of action really strong performance here. We still have the Panzer IV up here to worry about. It could get victory in the next turn attacking these units here, but we have one more activation. If we get a three, four, five, or six, we get a five. The US gets one more activation. We're gonna activate them for movement. This Pershing here, which activates both of them, we will go one, two up here, one, two up here to try to take out this Panzer IV if we ever get there. We'd like to get one more activation if we can. 
We get a two, so we don't, because I was hoping to move that Persian, which I was hoping to move this Persian over here on the other side of the river. It kind of broke down or something. It's just been sitting here by itself. German activation, turn five. They've got one last Hail Mary here. All right, so German activation, turn five. We are going to have this. It can actually fire from right here, but this is the front of the unit. Is that right? No, it is not. Yes, it is the front of the unit. Okay, so we're gonna move one turn here and have in one activation. Second activation for the Germans, the Panzer IV is gonna fire. It could still win if it gets a good roll. It is next, it's a plus one modifier. Two dice rolls plus one for that. Uh, minus one, because it's in the woods there actually. Minus one, not plus one. It needs a huge roll, an eight is not a 10. Eight plus one for the one unit firing is a nine. Minus one because it's in the woods is an eight. It does not get it. We go to the US activation for turn six. Let's think about what we wanna do as the US. Still, interestingly enough, this is actually still potentially a victory for the Germans if they can take out this one of these infantry units. So I think we wanna do everything we can to protect them, but we definitely don't want to leave oh the german on that last attack actually got plus one additional because of the flanking but it still didn't work out um it would the numbers wouldn't have worked there sorry i missed that number there we definitely want to use one activation to move this infantry unit to twist it to the front here i'm going to use the second one to twist this one to the front here to keep this panzer to get the die roll modifier that's our second activation let's roll to see if we get a third activation for the pershings we get a two we don't so we get a German turn, turn six. There's not much they can do. This is the best position to fire from and moving doesn't really help them at this point in time. So we're gonna have the Panzer fire. It's doing another attack at this infantry squad here, dug in into the woods. Two dice, a big roll here though, could, could still win the game for the Germans. They get a nine. Oh, it's lucky we turned them. Plus one is a 10, which is enough, but they're in the woods, which gets us that minus one die roll modifier for defense, which means that they only end up with a nine and the infantry barely survives that attack. So they are clawing into the woods here and digging in while the Panzer IVs try to root them out. The question now is, does it make sense to move the German unit? And I think actually it does, because we don't want to have them face an infantry attack here. And if we move them, one back here and turn them to face this way uh, so we can actually leave them in a better position here so the infantry can't attack them in the next turn then we can just move back up the hill here and attack again so we'll have the germans fall back there now we go to the uh, u.s turn turn seven only two turns left the infantry is in as good a position as it can get let's have our pershings move so if we activate our two pershings they can go one one they can't move into the woods because there's a movement cost of two there let's use our second activation to actually it doesn't make sense we're just going to let have that pershing on the other side of the the road of the river there have a barbecue it doesn't make sense to really move it we'll catch up to them after the war i don't know that just will assume that tank kind of broke down and that's the end of the u.s turn in turn seven now we go to the german activation in turn seven they're going to push up for one and their second activation is going to be attacking this infantry unit again for the third time. Moving, actually from the German perspective, moving this armored unit back here was actually a really good idea. It's gotten off some good attacks. It could win the battle for them here. It all comes down to this. They need a huge and successful attack. The armor pouring forward at the infantry here. They get a 10. Plus one unit for his attacking, which is an 11. Minus one because it's in the woods, which is a 10. It actually exactly matches the infantry defense number, which is enough to wipe it out. And our heroic German Panzer IV has captured victory for the Germans. They have wiped out two of the three units there at the end of turn seven, triggering an automatic victory. They wiped out the Wolverine Ace and the infantry. Victory goes to the Germans. <laughs> so, there you go. 
And that brings us to the end, our heroic German Panzer IV, bringing victory to the German forces, even though they lost down here four Panzer IVs and a Tiger, five of their six tanks knocked out. They were able to successfully knock out the Wolverine Ace and the infantry squad, which means that our Pershing forces couldn't rescue our units trapped up onto the ridge line. In, a, in retrospect, that was a really good move by the Panzer IV to come behind the line so that the Pershings couldn't hit it as they were coming across the field here. And that's what tipped the scales to the Germans for victory there. I'm gonna come back and do a full review on this series. I've played a number of scenarios from both the West on, uh, Tank on Tank West Front, Tank on Tank East Front, and adding in some of the rules from the expansions and some of the scenarios from the expansions too. I'll do a full review later, but a couple of general comments, just broad comments as we wrap this one up. I think you can take a look, as you look at this, you can see that there have been a lot of simpli simpl simplifications of combat done to make this a game that's accessible to new war gamers. And I think that's really what we have to consider when we evaluate this title, as that this is a title aimed at introducing either newcomers to hex encounter games or uh, you know I think this would work really well with children for inter for he hex encounter games you know there's there's enough here where you've got some strategy but it's by far you know no, in no way is it overwhelming you know I'd go complexity probably a two out of ten on this but you do have flanking you have group movement you want to use your headquarter units well again no stacking and you can't fire through units and you can't move you can't break stacking at any point in a turn here too so lots of things to really kind of simplify and streamline play. The scenarios I've found have been very tightly balanced. It can go either way. I played this one once to kind of just to make sure I understood it. I'm trying some different strategies and the U.S. just demolished the Germans. They tried a straightforward attack and it didn't work. Um, but the U.S. pulled out victory in the other one. So these really can tip either way, depending a little bit on strategy and then depending again on dice rolls, which is you know not a bad thing when you've got an introductory war game, especially if you've got um, kids that are kind of playing the game and learning things for the first time and stuff. So again, I'll come back with a full review but I just wanted to offer up those kind of quick observations as we wrap up this scenario. So thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll, I'll put a link to the review as soon as it's ready.